Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new SSD from SanDisk. This is the SanDisk Ultra Plus. I'm also going to be sharing some benchmarks and I have the uh, bare drive version right here as well as the desktop upgrade. Let's start off with a quick look at the retail, retail box. Just to point out, we have a 256 gigabyte capacity. This is also available in 64 gigabyte and 128 gigabyte capacities. It is a 2.5 inch SSD. Uh, the bare drive here comes with a spacer so you can make it a little bit thicker. So if you're gonna be using it in a notebook, uh, that will give you a bit more flexibility. Uh, the one on the right here comes with a uh, drive cage adapter, 3.5 inch mounting bracket. And they're gonna uh, operate on the SATA six gigabit per second bus, that is SATA at revision 3 uh, so I definitely recommend if you're going to be installing this in a laptop or a desktop make sure you have a SATA Rev 3 connector to connect it to. Let's take a look at the accessories for the desktop upgrade kit and actually one other thing from the retail box this does come with a three-year manufacturer's warranty from SanDisk. All right so inside the box here we have the drive itself of course we have an installation guide and warranty information as mentioned three-year warranty. We have a serial ATA cable right there. It is red in color, and that should uh, work at say at Rev 2 or Rev 3 speed, so you should be able to get to the maximum throughput. Again, uh, make sure you're connecting it to a SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second port to make sure you're going to get the maximum potential. I recommend a native SATA 6 gigabit per second port if you really want to get good speeds. But uh, here's a look at your drive bay adapter. So 2.5 inch mounting points right there to mount the drive to 1, 2, 3, 4, and then uh, side mounts right there. So this should fit in most standard 3.5 inch drive bays in most desktop computers. You also get a baggie of screws to mount the SSD to the drive bay and to mount the drive bay to your case. Next up the bare drive kit and uh, this one really is much more suited for notebook installation. So if you have a laptop and you want to upgrade to an SSD this would be the one to go with because in a laptop you don't really need a drive bay adapter. And that's really what's missing from this one. Uh, again, installation guide and warranty booklet right there. The drive itself, and this drive is seven millimeters thick, so it should fit in most uh, laptop, uh, laptop computers and ultrabooks that can fit a 2.5 inch drive that is seven millimeters in thickness. And some laptops and notebooks actually have a drive housing that is made for thicker drives because uh, notebook hard drives, uh, at least the original ones that came, oh, this is a tough, tough sticker right here. Okay, sticker is defeated. Um, make sure you have a cutting tool to get this out of the bag because, wow, that was tough. All right, um, apart from my inability to remove a sticker, let's take a look at this drive. Again, from the side, seven millimeters in thickness. And if you do have a laptop computer that is made for a thicker drive and you want to make sure it fits in there snugly, they've given you this little spacer. So the spacer just has some adhesive on the bottom. Remove that adhesive, you can uh, adhere it to the top of the drive just like this, and then that should make it fit more snugly in uh, desktop, I'm sorry, in laptop computers that uh, have the thicker drive housing. Let's uh, take a closer look at the SSD itself while we have it out here. So uh, fairly basic design here. Plastic housing, SanDisk Ultra Plus logoing right there, SanDisk logo. On the back uh, we have, of course, model number, uh, which in this case is SD SSDHP-256G. Uh, some additional information such as warranty void if you remove this sticker. Uh, if you do want to disassemble this drive, which will void your warranty, bear that in mind, uh, you will need to remove this sticker here. And I'm going to do that in just a moment so we can take a look at the internals. Uh, but connector wise here we have standard serial ATA connectors. So data on the left, power on the right, and again SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabit per second compatibility. Finally for mounting we have four mounting points on the bottom standard 2.5 inch drive mounting points. We also have side drive mounting points on either side. So with the removal of a few screws, I can remove the drive's top cover and hey, look at that. Tiny, tiny little PCB on this SSD. In fact, most of the housing here is purely to make sure that this will fit in the standard 2.5 inch drive uh, form factor. The uh, SSD itself is very small. Uh, you've probably seen MSATA SSDs that might be right around this size, but uh, there, of course, you still have your standard serial ATA connector, which uh, is, is how this drive interfaces, of course. Let's take a closer look at some of the components on this drive. It's a Marvell controlled uh, SSD, so that little square chip right there is a Marvell 88SS9175 SSD processor. You also have some Samsung. Uh, DDR memory right there and that is uh, there to perform caching functions so basically uh, as the Marvell is handling the interaction of data from the rest of your computer to the NAND on here you can cache data temporarily on a little uh, extra DDR chip right there 
Uh, we have four NAND packages, so two here on the back, two more here on this side. Uh, it is SanDisk labeled, and this is actually SanDisk 19 nanometer EX2 ABL MLC NAND flash memory, and you will note that there are four NAND packages, two here on this side, two more on that side, which means 64 gigabytes per package, gives you a total capacity of 256 gigabytes, and uh, formatted in Windows, this will get you about 238 gigabytes total usable space. Uh, that said, now that we've taken a closer look at the internals, let's take a look at some benchmarks. Next up, we're going to take a look at some benchmarks, or at least some screenshots of the benchmarks that I have ran. So first off, for our test bed, we are connecting this drive to to test it. We have an Intel Core i5-3570K processor. Uh, we're currently running on a Z77 motherboard. That's a Maximus 5 gene from Asus. Uh, so we are connecting to the native SATA 6 gigabit per second uh, controller, running at SATA 600 or 6 gigabit per second speeds. And uh, yeah, that's said for uh, our benchmarks. We're going to start off with... AS SSD. This is a popular benchmarking utility. And uh, here on the left and right, this is the same test, megabytes per second on the left, input output operations per second on the right. Overall score of 872. We can see we hit uh, maximum sequential reads of about uh, just under 490 megabytes per second. Sequential writes about 440 megabytes per second. We can see input output operations per second over here on the right. Uh, in the 4K 64 thread test, we hit just shy of 80,000. Then we hit about 42,500 on the rates. Uh, we also wanted to briefly mention the access time because that is definitely one of the features of an SSD and one of the big improvements in your user experience if you connect one of these to a system, especially if you're running your operating system. Access time, so 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 milliseconds respectively for reads and writes on that, which is really good performance, and that's why uh, SSDs are awesome. But uh, we also have some ASSSD copy benchmark right here, so this is sort of simulating uh, some more use case scenarios such as ISO program and game tests. You can see our scores there, 235, 202, 226, as well as the duration of the test there. So uh, if you have some drives and you want to put them through the ASSSD tests, you can sort of give yourself a comparison to that. Next up is compression benchmark. Uh, the Marvell controller that we have does not perform on-the-fly compression, so you will see pretty steady results here. This is just running from 0% compression all the way up to 100% compression. And uh, as you can see, the chart stays pretty stable throughout. We're running right about 430 to 450 megabytes per second on our writes, and we're staying pretty stable at just shy of 500 megabytes per second on our reads. Okay, let me jump ahead now to Atto. This is a very, very popular benchmarking utility, especially if you're a drive manufacturer. Chances are, if you have uh, specs on an SSD, they're probably rated in Atto. It uh, does transfer sizes between 0.5 and 8,192 kilobytes. You can see all of those uh, transfer sizes rated right there, and the speeds on this chart. 500 megabytes per second is right there in the middle, so you can see it's exceeding that in some of the benchmarks. Uh, the actual Specs from SanDisk off of the box, well not off of the box, but that they will tell you that this drive can hit. For the 256 gig version at least is 530 megabytes per second for reads and 445 megabytes per second writes. And as you can see, reads right there, 530, 531, 531, so we hit our 530 megabytes per second. We also actually hit even 453, 451 megabytes per second. Uh, for the right, so we actually exceeded some of the rated specs from SanDisk. I also ran this at Q depth of 10 because um, that will usually give you better results. That actually gives the drive more data to chew through and can generally give you some improvement there. So with Q depth 10, um, which is not as realistic for day to day computer use, but we did it uh, again 450, 452. Uh, for writes, for reads, we hit up uh, 530 range. Uh, next up, I also ran the disk speed test from Blackmagic Design. Uh, so this is specifically geared at using this in uh, video uh, situations. Uh, Blackmagic is, generally makes uh, computer video devices and software and stuff. So what this will do, it'll take your drive, it will test it, it'll see how fast it goes, and then this has a chart down here of different video levels of um, compression and detail, and it will tell you whether or not this drive is suited for that. And we can see this drive has performed very well. It's got the green check, check marks in most of the columns here. It's just some higher frame rate and higher uh, bit depth. Uh, video here that it probably would not be recommended for, but everything else. And we hit 440 megabytes per second right, and just shy of 500 megabytes per second again on the read. And then finally, we have Crystal Dismark. Uh, this is uh, similar to our, our AS SSD test that I showed you guys at the beginning, but again, uh, just sort of verifying those results. 514.7 megabytes per second um, for the reads, 450 megabytes per second for the writes. Uh, bear in mind, this is using compressible data, 
I also ran it in default mode, which is incompressible. Um, as previously mentioned, this drive does not perform compression on the fly, so the results are pretty much the same between those. Uh, but for input-output operations per second, we hit 82,000 on the read and uh, about just shy of 44,000 input-output operations per second on the right. Finally, we have PC Mark 7. We ran the storage benchmark. The numbers are down here in the bottom left. For the secondary scorage overall score, 5,289, which is actually 89 points higher than the documentation I have here from Sand SanDisk. So again, uh, we hit just beyond what they have said the drive can handle. There's all the individual storage scores for Windows Defender, pictures, video editing, um, little individual tests that it runs. So um, again, if you guys uh, want to compare your results to this, uh, there they are. And that does it for the benchmarks. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the SanDisk Ultra Plus SSD in the 256 gigabyte capacity. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.